yeah, so Sonoris Perry, I'm, I'm very proud of um, the announcers for refraining from saying, and number 32 knifes it up the middle in the goal line stand. It was good. I'm glad they refrained from that. You couldn't, you couldn't refrain, though. You couldn't refrain from that. Who's your leading blocker, Al Collins? <laughs> After you hit that subscribe bell, be sure to head over to Sportscaster and join us every Saturday at 8 a.m. You can give that one a shot again. TJ Yeldon lost snaps to Sonoris Perry, who most people forgot was on the team. Did you know that Sonoris Perry, Sonoris Perry was drafted, scouted by Drew Locke and Drew Hickey? Mm -hmm. Of course he was. Okay, and now he's getting snaps. Yeah, of course How big was. of an influence do those guys have in that room? I know. Okay, it, it could be concerning that he lost snaps to Perry. Yeah. However, it could have been a rock and a hard place where they transitioned, mm -hmm. where he was getting looks with the second team, but the third team was all Perry, so they just decided to keep them together, that unit. Well, I You mean, don't know, because Murphy, then he fumbled, too. Murphy so, got a lot of carries, too. Murphy looked real good. Murphy looked sharp. Marcus yeah. Murphy, you look sharp. It's the jersey. It's 22. That must be it. Yeah, they did. I, I mean, it looks sharp. But once again, we have to take everything in the preseason with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. Nathan Peterman looks sharp. He's even fooling Gruden. Like, yeah. Gruden's supposed to be a quarterback guru. He goes, I tell you what, man, I like this Nathan Peterman. But that being said, Singletary not having eye popping stats, but having eye popping. Ability to get inside and get small right. and use his low center of gravity to do, do a few get things. Get small? Here. Bro, he was born that way. Named a Lady Gaga song after him. Born this way, it's a Lady Gaga song. We are at a stoplight at a major intersection. I'm going to get out and start walking. <laughs> I'm not even going to put it in park either. <laughs> What is your concern? Do you think that this that Perry uh, Singletary is getting this much work because they are in fact thinking of moving on from McCoy, or do you think they just want to see what this kid has in order to say, "Hey, listen, we're going to give you the keys to the car for four years"? Or what do you think is the the well, true? The true. What did you What did you gain from the game? So from what happened? Brandon Bean called Devin Singletary's vision elite. Right, he used the term. He has elite level vision. Mm. That is a quote, right? Mm. So to me, he was running in zone concepts before and taking most of his snaps out of shotgun. Yes, most of his snaps were quarterback takes that shotgun, hands it to him. So you got time to watch things develop. You've got a front row seat. You're not committed to making having to run yes. until those gaps start to open up. And in a zone concept, it's typically a little bit easier to see those gaps than yes. than not. So. What's the best thing you can do when you're taking a guy who you think has great vision, who's coming from his own blocking concept, who also only took snaps from shotgun, is you get him in and you say, okay, listen, we'll down block, go with the flow. We're, let's get you some looks, right? Let's mm -hmm. show you what this is really like. Um, and uh, I think it was more about trying to figure out what his eyes see. I think they were happy with what, what he did. I don't think he made too many bad decisions when he was running the football. He was patient when he had to be. Right. As a volume runner, that's what they gave him. Yeah. Yep. They have nine carries. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. You think that'll happen? In one series. I don't think, I don't think, I don't think he'll get nine carries. In again. one series, he had six touches in a row. Yeah. I don't I don't think that's going to happen again. He had four carries and two two catches yeah. in one series. Like, you want to test the durability of the kid this early? Really? Well, and you put him out there with Barkley, so you're making his life a little easier. Right, because Barkley knows how to move things around. Mm -hmm. Barkley knows his stuff. So Barkley's not going to put him in a position where he's going to be unsuccessful. Whereas Allen, I mean, let's be honest, Allen would still at this point. Uh, if they move on from McCoy to Singletary, yeah. does that tell you, A, Singletary's ready to do it, and B, Allen? Because you know how we always talked about they got Gore and Shady to try to assist Allen. Help him with, with yeah. protections and uh, coverages and stuff like that. So, um, 
do you think that they have that vote of confidence in Allen if they're able to move on See, from and that that alone is the reason I don't think Singletary takes the number one job this year I really don't I thought you said after week 10 he does yeah so do I gotta go to the tape no 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 I agree yeah after week 10 but that's only remain that's only six games left in the season so at the beginning of the season it's I mean we know McDermott rewards incumbents right and they're going to protect Allen. They're going to do everything they can to protect Allen. Mm-hmm. And Singletary doesn't protect Allen. He doesn't. So. But if he can learn to. Yeah. That's yeah. huge. Sure. You say you, th- you say the window is two and a half months for Singletary to learn what McCoy knows and what Gore knows. Yeah. At that point. Hmm. Interesting. At that point, it just becomes about getting him carries. You know, you saw what you saw what he. You saw what it looks like with him in an NFL game. You saw the decisions that he made. Now, again, there weren't going up against real complex blitz packages. Like, there weren't many bad decisions for him to make. They did a good job of giving him opportunities to be successful in. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, Even so... Running behind that line, too. Right. And you also saw why he had so many yards after contact. I'm bringing him down, one dude. Yeah, he's he's tough, man. He's tough to bring down. So, a nice big flash from Singletary. I like I like what I saw from him, Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm not willing to say okay, well, Shady's gone. Yeah, there's no way. There's too much at play. There's too much at play for me. So, as far as the uh, running back position is concerned. Do I see McCoy being your starter? Absolutely. Yes. Still. Do I see Gore being his second? Yes. Yeah, I do. Because right now, you know, Gore is going to continue to be your short yardage guy and your definitive passing down back, right? So he's going to eat into McCoy's snaps. McCoy's going to be down one, down two. Gore's going to be a third down back. And then any second and long, you're going to see Gore in there. Yeah. Right? Any obvious passing situation. And Singletary's just going to slowly eat away at, you know, at snaps, like if the Bills are up 14, expect to see Singletary. You know, you're not going to see him in situations where um, they're going to, you know, they need four yards. It's not going to happen. Okay. You know, like you, you have McCoy and Gore there. I can't imagine them cutting Frank Gore at this point. Do you? No, no. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't see them cutting a lot of guys right now because they don't have to. It doesn't benefit them at all. Yeah. Cut these guys. And uh, you went out uh, and got yourself a bunch of insurance policies for the guys that you didn't think you can get. You, you, you pick up Gore and Yeldon because you don't know if you're going to have Singletary. You pick yeah. up um, Ty Nasecki, Lee, Adrian Waddle because you don't know if you're going to get Ford. Uh-huh. You know, certain things like that. So that being said, we'll see eventually what their thought process was. With the, but this is kind of, they have developed a pattern uh-huh. of guys they like to pick up. Now, uh, I mean, as far they as... They double down. They, yes. Yeah, they yes. double down in free agency and then uh, into the draft. However, looking at the guys they pick up, if they're from Miami, and they Hickey and Locke got a hold of them, talk about Phillips, he's not just a fill-in. Mm-hmm. He's there to start until Oliver's developed, but he'll still be a part of this team. Right. Perry, we need special teams help. Well, Perry's a great guy. So they let, picked up Gore from Miami. You so, know what I mean? So let me ask this then, so, right? You have Sonoris Perry, right? Is it... Are, are Sonoris Perry and Frank and uh, Patrick DeMarco fighting for one roster spot? No, because Perry doesn't play the H-back role. Okay. He's not your ca- special teams captain. Okay. I'd say they're both uh, they're both special teams players. However, um, at this point, DeMarco's your more versatile guy that you're putting in multiple spots. Yeah. Well, that's, that's again, DeMarco got. covers up the, you know... The tight end. The issues. tight end position right now. Right now. That's a right now. That that was a, that was a conscious effort by DeMarco to do that. Because well, he knew, he saw the writing on the wall. Yeah. Like, whoa. Uh, well, okay. let's not forget, big difference between Sonoris Perry and Patrick DeMarco from a salary standpoint, right? Yes. Because Patrick DeMarco is on this team week one. His salary is guaranteed the rest of the season. $2 million. Yep, he's immediately a vested veteran. So his salary is guaranteed the rest of the season because he's a vested veteran. Sonoris Perry isn't. No. So, um, you know, I know we're talking about nickels and dimes here according to the salary cap, but 
I they mean, add up, man. They add up. I mean, you got to think about it. the Bills just just the Bills did this before. Who did we cut? We had a fullback and we cut him. Ah, uh, who the hell was it? Tolbert. No, it wasn't Tolbert. Um, we had a fullback. We cut him for for Glenn Gronkowski and then brought him back the following. Oh, it was Patrick Demarco. Wasn't it? No, it wasn't. Damn it. Who was it? Jerome Felton. <laughs> That's who it was. We had Jerome Felton. We cut him. We we cut him at, at last cuts. We cut him. Glenn Gronkowski played one week with the Bills, and then they signed Jerome Felton again. And the reason they did that was because they'd avoided the vested veteran salary guarantee. That's what it was. Boom. <laughs> so, uh, the long and short of it, I guess we can kind of look at it and say, the Bills running back room right now, this is a tough team to make. Just any position, this is a tough team to make. And running back is no exception. I don't think you help your team by trading McCoy. No? No. Even if it's De- for a pick? Depending on who you get. I See, I wouldn't trade him for another player. No, man. Depending on... What I'm sorry, what you get. Whether okay. you get a player or a pick. Third rounder, I think, is, is a pipe dream. Oh, yeah. And, and up. Yeah. Uh, a player, well, dep- they are, they're willing to swap player for player. I mean, we have to see who that player would be. Um, well, let me so, ask you this. Let me ask you this. With the trade of Duke Johnson to Houston, third yes. round pick if he starts, if he plays in 11 games, fourth round pick if he doesn't, yeah. right? Don't you think that helps the Bills getting a third-round pick from McCoy? Wouldn't you value McCoy over Duke Johnson? Houston Stones were in the fire. Like, everybody knew. When they cut Deonta Foreman, everybody's like, okay, you're going to just roll into the season with Lamar Miller? Okay, have a good time. Like... Well, I understand that. And uh, you know what? You're you're essentially saying you're you're banking on, okay, if we can't sign him, he's going to play nine games. Yeah. <laughs> He's in a contract here, so you can do something. If after five, six games, you think Duke Johnson is part of your long-term plans and you end up playing him and then he ends up being ends up playing 10 games, you give him a third-round pick, well, that's a guy that you would have had to draft that's a third-round That's your anyway. replacement that's your, running yeah, back. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, that's what the Bills did with Singletary. You took him in the third round. That's fine. I, you know, uh, I don't fault Houston for trying to do that, but you probably should have tried to get him before you cut Foreman. I have to retract that he did sign a contract extension in 2018. Okay. So let's. let's it's even what, smarter because yeah. McCoy's on a contract here, so you don't so, know whether or not you're gonna have a 31 year old running back for an extended period of time. Yeah. So he's 2.2 this year, right? 2020, he's 4.1. 2021, he's 5.1. That is cheap for that type of production. He's. he's projected to give you as well far as- and here's the crazy thing about it right so since he was recently traded for right dead cap they don't no, have to account for have, the yeah but here's the thing just his base what's his base salary that's the that's the base salary his uh, that, deal included no signing bonus money really yeah why so, so he, why would he do that so he's got a 3.6 base next year at a 4.65 base next year, and his per game roster bonus is 400,000 if he makes his per game. So Cle- he was in Cleveland. He was free to trade. He was free to trade. Wow. Wow. And he's 26. That's see. Those are all the re- those are all the reasons so why the he's reasons more intriguing. He's, so that, but that's but that's what I'm saying is he's worth a third. You think you're getting a third for a no. 31-year-old LaShawn McCoy in the last year of his deal, making the third most money at the position, fourth you, most money. But you'd only have to account league. for six on your on your. You're right. You're right. You would only have to account for six million if you're another team. But but right. But any asset you give up is an asset that you're going to lose to replace that player the next year. Mm-hmm. So if, if you get a fifth from McCoy, I think that's where his value is because you're not looking at replacement player level in a fifth round. You're not looking to replace a player in the fifth round. You're looking to build your roster. And you don't want to give him a fourth because then the Bills would have two fourths to try to jump back into the third to skip all those compensatory picks. Mm -hmm. So. Dangerous. It is. Dangerous, dangerous game. I like it. That'll do, Pig. That'll do.